Hello, and thank you for coming everybody um, for this session of STEM Community Lunchtime Conversations. My name is Jeremy Babender and hosting with me today is Beth Nickel from Arizona Science Center. And today we are excited to talk with several chief science officers on how, how they don't, um, I'm totally biffing up on the, the model, how they don't just hope it happens, but they make it happen. And it's really amazing what they have accomplished over the past uh, few seasons. So next slide to Beth. All right. So during this session, uh, our chief science officers from all around the world will discuss the CSO program, the impact they are having on their STEM communities, how the program has provided opportunities for them to grow and expand as leaders, CSO expansion plans and proposals, and the importance of CSO alumni engagement. Our CSOs are students in grades six through 12 who serve as STEM ambassadors and a liaison for STEM opportunities in their communities. Chief science officers amplify student voice by bringing their peers and community leaders together to ignite new opportunities in STEM and innovation. Our presenters for this session are CSO Nikhil, Central Valley, Arizona, CSO Saiba, Great Lakes Bay Region, Michigan, CSO Ananda, Metro Atlanta, Georgia, CSO Lauren, Central Valley, Arizona, CSO Haley, Hood River, Oregon, CSO Valentina, West Valley, Arizona, CSO Austin, Bucks County, Pennsylvania, CSO Syra, West Valley, Arizona, CSO Rihanna, East Valley, Arizona, CSO alumna Andrea, Sonora, Mexico, and CSO alumni Emily, Great Lakes Bay Region, Michigan. Thank you all for joining us today to speak with this group. Hi everyone, my name is CSO Nikhil, the elected Chief Science Officer from North High School. My goal as a Chief Science Officer is to spread my passion for STEM nationally and internationally. In the end, I hope to spread the program to my home country of India, showing that success is a viable option no matter the background. And the awesome thing is the CSO International Program helps to support just that. The International Program has continued to develop and adapt to the needs of the participants, but the mission is clear, to engage a global network of 6th to 12th graders to be STEM ambassadors. It is important that all CSOs work on leadership development, become more aware of their STEM opportunities, and improve their employability skills. The CSO program will expect you to be a user of technology, advocate for diverse learners at your site, and be a critical, creative thinker. On to the next slide. Truly, the vision is based on our ability as a global network to be change makers. We ask our CSOs to think about the difference they want to see on their campus, in their community, around their state, and even in their country. The CSO program believes in its students. The vision is empowering CSOs to take action and be aware of their ability to make a difference. Next slide. So how does the CSO program support the mission and vision? Regional leads and cabinet coordinators are very important. Along with their CSO advisor and site administrators, the CSO program structure is designed to allow communication, collaboration, and help them engage with CSOs and other adults who are building STEM awareness. Within the cabinet and the region, CSOs who serve as leadership council members work to support their peers along the way. Many of us on the call are leadership council members and have been in the program for at least two years. Next slide. And finally, the CSO program goals are truly the foundation for all things we do as CSOs. We don't want to create a global network of diverse STEM leaders, and we don't mean by race and gender. We mean by um, we don't mean by race and gender, but as thinkers. So be different. Using G Suite allows CSOs to communicate and collaborate in a safe online environment. The awesome thing is each CSO has an email and drive that can connect them with others in the network. Through action plans, we work to enrich STEM culture and build STEM awareness. No matter what, we're encouraged to follow through with what we choose. And during the year as a CSO, we have opportunities and invitations to meet a variety of STEM professionals and engage in important conversations, just like this one. Our voice represents us, our peers, our community. Together, we represent the entire CSO network and people are listening. Thank you.
Uh, hello everyone, I'm CSS Saiba from Michigan, and I'm also a member of the International Council. So, as Nikhil mentioned, CSOs want to engage people in STEM, so action plans are all about making a difference in schools and even in your community or nation, creating amazing ways for kids K-12 through to experience the amazing qualities of STEM. We also want to just spark the interest that people have opportunities to engage and express their voice, such as through STEM career panels and many other things virtually and even in person. Although this year we had to do things at a virtual level. So on the screen, we've shown that some pictures of CSO Precious Action Plan to teach STEM in India last year, the Jefferson CSO's Cupcake Challenge in their committee, and a picture of a virtual mathematics festival. All these things can help people get engaged in STEM careers since really tomorrow, tomorrow students will try to solve the problems of our future. Thank you. Good afternoon, everyone. I am CSO Ananda from Metro Atlanta. The CSO Equity for Everyone, or EE Committee, was created to educate CSOs about the importance of STEM diversity, equity, and inclusion in their endeavors to leave positive impacts on their communities. To put diversity, equity, and inclusion into action, CSOs must first understand what they are. We define these terms and identify how they can negatively impact others through microaggressions and discrimination. We also discuss the significance of acknowledging implicit biases and privileges others and perhaps themselves may have and how to prevent these things from clouding judgment. Good evening, everyone. My name is Cia Lauren, and I'm the elected chief science officer from Central Valley, and this is my sixth year as a chief science officer. Moreover, we created a section called See Something, Say Something, Stand Up. We research questions and address them in our DEI slideshow. While the materials put together are far from a comprehensive list of resources and methods, we believe that they are useful and can be applied through patience and practice. We must recognize unfair bias if we wish to eliminate it. I created sections that speak to the ways we can address concerning situations when they arise, whether it be unfair bias or behaviors that might indicate someone is not emotionally doing well. The CSO EE Committee also focuses on promoting diversity in STEM and making STEM opportunities available to all. Another major factor in the STEM education equity is the relinquishment of the one size fits all mentality. We emphasize that STEM education must cater to all learning styles and abilities. Encouraging STEM incorporation in day-to-day -day activities and educating our audience about companies that have a considerable amount of focus on STEM will allow CSOs and their communities to become and remain interested in STEM pursuits and careers, paving the way for the next generation of STEM professionals. Thank you. Thanks, Ananda and Lauren. Hi, everyone. My name is Haley, and I'm a Chief Science Officer from Hood River Valley High School in Oregon, and I'm also a member of the International Leadership Council. Staying connected is critical for success in the Chief Science Officers Program. As CSO Nikhil mentioned earlier, one of the CSO program goals is to foster communication and collaboration among CSOs. In previous years, staying connected with CSOs at the school, regional, and state level meant gathering in person for events and trainings. After the start of the pandemic, we could no longer meet in person. To adapt, events, meetings, and trainings began to occur using Zoom. We've also started using Google Hangouts, a virtual messaging program, on a regular basis to chat and stay in touch with our fellow CSOs. Since switching to a virtual format, it's been much easier to collaborate with CSOs from around the globe. I now have regular meetings with CSOs from across the nation and even across the world. I love having the ability to help train CSOs from Arizona, meet CSOs from Kenya, and support Michigan CSO Saiba's virtual math festival all from my own home. Harnessing the power of technology has allowed the CSO program to become stronger and more connected than ever before. Good afternoon, my name is Valentina and I'm the elected Chief Science Officer at Basis Goodyear in the West Valley in Arizona. And as CSO Haley mentioned, staying connected has been crucial to the success of the program given the environment we have transitioned into. From having one-on-one -on -one conversations to group meetings and large trainings with hundreds of people, we have used platforms such as Zoom and Google in order to make it happen. I personally have had the opportunity to connect with CSOs from different regions through Zoom and on science panels and recently through training with students in Guanajuato, Mexico. It has been empowering to continue to share my passion 
uh, for STEM in a different environment. And because of this increased virtual interaction, the lack of broadband in parts of the state and world can present a challenge. Not all students may have access to a dependable and stable internet connection. Nevertheless, the Chief Science Officers Program has strived to maintain our global network engaged and active. Hello everyone, my name is Austin and I'm a Chief Science Officer from Pedmarch High School, Pennsylvania. I'm here today to talk about adult leadership and its effects on CSOs and students in general. So the overarching theme of this slide is that leadership creates motivation. And that means that adults play a large role to students' success, even if that role is not explicit or largely apparent. This leadership sparks students' desire to do things. So acting on an idea individually can seem daunting and uncertain at first. So this is where adult leadership is crucial and comes into play. If you know you have a platform and supportive base behind you, you can be the one to take the lead and do it with confidence. All you need is that start to get you going. So a few weeks ago, I recently organized and hosted a CSO International Zoom with two NASA scientists. This was uh, in wake of the SpaceX rocket launch into outer space, and I thought it would be cool to have a space-themed Zoom. So I was granted permission and encouragement to achieve this vision. That adult leadership through my CSO advisors and CSO international leaders sparked my desire to pursue and create this event. Although I did all the work, the leadership component was crucial to the overall success of the event. So if you have an idea, an inquiry, a hope, if you want to achieve an answer, all you have to do is ask. You'll be surprised how easy it is to bring an idea to light just by reaching out to people and asking. Be curious and ask. And once you do, you'll have the spark that you need to do things through the adult leadership. Hello, everyone, and welcome to Perspective. I'm your host, CSO Kyra. Some of you may be wondering, what exactly is Perspective? Well, Perspective is a YouTube channel focused on highlighting the growth and accomplishments of CSOs around the globe, as well as featuring interviews from STEM professionals all around the world. I, along with a team of collaborators, founded Perspective because we witnessed all the outstanding things that our CSOs have achieved and wanted to give them a platform to share their accomplishments with the world. We also wanted an opportunity to share the resources we have obtained from partnerships, such as interviews with STEM professionals and tours of STEM facilities. And so, Perspective was born. Of course, none of this would be possible without my collaborators. Besides myself, our CSO team members are CSO Valentina, our reporter, CSO Ben, our local science comedian, CSO McKaylee, our STEM demonstrations expert, CSO Prisha, our marketing genius, CSO Brandon, our up and coming master of STEM challenges, CSO Alexa, our, our assistant reporter, and last but certainly not least, CSO Nikhil, our editor in chief. We also have an excellent team of STEM mentors that help us make the best possible finished product. Jake from Michigan, Claire, our marketing supervisor, and Kelly, the director of student success. Don't forget to head on over to Perspective for monthly videos all about STEM. Thank you. Great, thank you so much, CSO. CSO Riona was not able to join us today, so I'm gonna present for her. So CSO Riona and a few other CSOs have had the opportunity to do some research with Dr. Hedge Research Lab at Arizona State University. So CSO Riona is very excited about learning various concepts in chemistry um, and how Dr. Hetch just doesn't teach, but really cares about each and every one of the students and allowing them to ask questions and really gain that knowledge. Um, he also is a, creates a very inclusive uh, environment so that everyone has room to grow. So CSO Valentina, I know you're also a part of that group. Do you wanna say one or two words on this as well? Yeah, for sure. So it's definitely been a great opportunity to learn about all these concepts into a way uh, in which they're interesting to students such as ourselves. And uh, it's been a great opportunity to further learn more about these concepts outside of the classroom. Thank you. Hi, I'm CSO alumni Andrea from Sonora, Mexico. And I really want to talk some statistics, but not really what you're seeing on the presentation. The program here started on 2018 and we were 14 kids, okay? We jumped in a van and right onto something we didn't know what was going on. But it really changed our mentality and it really started our way of thinking that we can make it better, that we can really make it happen. And that's when we started doing our own LTIs that I hope you already know and you have seen on our website. 
And now we are in Sonora 75 students. But since two weeks ago, we started doing the program in another state that is Guanajuato, and we are over 2,030. Wait, I'm wrong. 235 students. Sorry, the numbers are really wrong in my head. Uh, but what I really wanted to say is some of the contrast that of the context that I wanted to mention. In Mexico, this program has been really, really important because the student dropouts are sadly astonishing, okay? Uh, taking students from 35 years or older, only 16% of the, of the people are college students and only of those 35 and older, 33% have finished high school. So. When you think on the, those numbers, it's really not good, not enthusiasmating. But what I really wanted to tell you is that when we bring this program and we give hope to those families, we give enthusiasm, we give science, we give engineering, we give them a future per perspective. We give them a future focused career. They can focus on that. They can believe they can make it happen. They can believe they can actually work for that or have a career in that or have an open field. And bringing this program that has already been successful in other countries on our next door country, that is USA. I'm really nervous, sorry. <laughs> on our next door, next, next door country, it's they have worked it out and we can really bring it home and take it for our own, bring it to our context, work it out and make our students, our people, work for that same goal. Wonderful. Thank you, CSO alumni, Andrea. I did see that CSO Riona was able to join us. Uh, CSO Riona, I'm going to go ahead and go back to your slide. Would you like to talk to us about the research you're doing? Sure. So I'm CSO Riona. I'm a uh, Chief Science Officer at Paragon Science Academy in Arizona. And I recently had the pleasure of joining Dr. Sydney Hecht's research lab with a few of my fellow CSOs. And it was a really exciting and informative experience. He guided us through the fundamentals of shorthand amino acid structures. And he explained peptide bond like you know, peptide bonds in a way that was really engaging and illuminating. And it didn't feel like we were learning, but like having a conversation. It was really interesting. And it was such an inclusive environment. I, it's a recurring event, and I just wanted to point out how amazing the CSO program is. They gave us this opportunity. I'm definitely looking forward to going again and looking forward to more opportunities. Great. Thank you, CSO Riona. So um, I would like to talk a little bit about the CSO expansion. So. Um, not only expanding in the US, but globally. So you can see here in the United States, um, we're really focused right now on growth in Idaho. So the entire state um, has come on board that will start onboarding their students in the fall, or rather this summer and into the fall. We've started some conversations with California because of some um, connections that CSO Prisha had um, there. We have Louisiana, uh, we have three major cities partnering with LSU, which is fantastic. We love when our ecosystems or our universities partner um, with various school districts to support the CSO program. And in Pennsylvania, so we have seen, we're seeing statewide growth. Um, we're increasing our, our cabinets from two um, to four, which is really wonderful. And then as CSO alumni Andrea talked about, we're, um, Standing in Latin America and Mexico specifically. So uh, we have uh, Sonora, um, but we also, and then she talked about the expansion that we have in Guadalajara. I might have said that wrong, I'm practicing. So um, where we had 235 students recently with 87 um, educators. So um, that team really put together an amazing uh, leadership training opportunity or institute opportunity for those students. Um, and then we're going into Yucatan and Chiapas. Ch Hold on, I'm going to say it right. Chiap Chiapas. 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 Oh, yeah. it's so close. Thank you. Chiapas. Oh, I haven't practiced ahead of time. Chiapas <laughs> uh, and Chihuahua uh, and Mexico City. Um, and so it's really exciting that, you know, the expansion that we're having across um, Mexico. And then we're also across the Atlantic. So we are in Kenya and Kuwait. 
Quaid. Um, and this is uh, really an awesome opportunity. While they have started last year, they had some expansion because of uh, COVID, they did have to take a little bit of a break, not being as um, active as they wanted to be this year, but are excited to be back again um, next fall. So that's a little bit about our expansion. And then I'm gonna take a moment to show a video from our CSO alumni. Okay. Emily Karumba, a Chief Science Officer alum from the Great Lakes Bay region in Michigan. Throughout this past year, myself and other CSO alumni have been working to create the CSO Alumni Network for CSOs to join once they graduate high school. Through this network, we hope to foster a community of young adult leaders and provide them with opportunities in mentoring, networking, collective action, and other professional development opportunities. So far, there have been virtual professional development opportunities with sessions focusing on LinkedIn profiles, soft skill development, resume writing, informational interviews, and more. Some alumni have also been involved in mentoring current CSOs through aiding them in forming and executing their action plans, as well as volunteering at the Leadership Training Institute and cabinet meetings. As the alumni network continues to expand, we hope to provide more opportunities for the alumni as they enter a new chapter of their lives, as well as have them give back to current CSOs. It is important to keep alumni engaged with the CSO program even after graduation, as it helps to build a network of bright individuals that can continue to be great leaders both in STEM conversations as well as other areas. By keeping past CSOs involved, we are able to encourage and help current CSOs in not only their action plans, but their leadership abilities overall. The alumni network is also useful in preparing alumni for the next chapters of their lives, whether it be with internships, professional profiles, mentorships, or just by having leadership opportunities. The CSO Alumni Network is very excited to continue growing and finding more ways for alumni to be involved with current CSOs as well as with their own professional development as young adults. Thank you. CSO alum, Alumni uh, Emily is absolutely fantastic from Michigan. Her and CSO Alumni Andrea have been putting in a lot of time to build that to build that program, that extension. Um, so from sixth grade and on, right? Being able to, after high school, to be able to stay connected. You just heard from the CSOs about how being a mentor with one another and learning from one another is part of this experience. So providing them an opportunity to continue to do that beyond high school was really important to the CSO alumni. And so we do have um, several partnerships that are happening. Uh, with the CSO program, which are really exciting. Um, so as you can see up here, a lot of, we've been partnering a lot with our STEM ecosystem partners. And so um, most of the states have come on through that STEM ecosystem with the exception of Mexico and Kuwait. So um, working with and partnering with our STEM ecosystems across the US and abroad has really allowed us to expand the CSO program. Um, we've had corporate partners like Chevron, Biosat, and so on and so forth, who find so much um, uh, opportunity and love what we're doing that they have come aboard and are helping with those kind of next bullet points um, along with state governments to help fund various different states. For example, um, we have Pennsylvania has decided to fund um, the expansion and that's coming through the state. Same thing with Idaho. Louisiana, for example, is doing that, but they are partnering with Chevron to accelerate that growth. So it's a really beautiful um, combination between the corporate partners and state governments coming together to see um, the importance in, in programming like this uh, for um, students and making that expansion happen. We also are fortunate enough to have federal government agencies like the National Science Foundation to provide several grants to fund the program and they've been a huge supporter of expansion and uh, growth and curriculum. Uh, and then currently uh, we don't have any endowments but this is something we're looking at doing moving forward as we start to expand into new regions. Um, so for anybody on the call who is interested, you've heard these very articulate CSOs, far more articulate than I am. So thank you CSOs for being amazing. Um, and want to think about how you can partner with the CSO program, start a program or just partner with us. We'd love to hear from you. So you can email Jake Lonsberry. You can see his email up on here. Um, and he can talk to you as our director of global partnerships. And he'd love to talk to you about expansion and various types of partnerships. Um, and as our slogan is uh, says is don't just hope it happens, make it happen. So we hope everyone on the call here today uh, will join with us to make it happen. So Jeremy, we can take a few um, questions in the chat now. Um, 
I'll, if you can start just post chats, I know we often get quite a few uh, questions uh, for, for the students, a great chance to kind of hear their perspective. It's really, they have a lot of wisdom already working on this. Just to start it off, um, you know, I don't know if every CSO needs to respond to it, but I really like you to, to speak to the impact that the CSO program has made on you personally in terms of your, your personal growth and your impact in your community. I can speak if no one else is inclined. So for me personally, the CSO program has helped me develop not only as a person involved in science, but also as a leader. It has helped me develop skills as like in networking and developing different plans for, le for lessons for other CSOs. Absolutely, and I can echo everything that my peer has said earlier, in addition to the fact that, especially as someone who's a second generation immigrant, I grew up with parents who were incredibly hardworking, parents who taught me the value of a good education and a good work ethic. I just wasn't aware of the opportunities in STEM. Most of my STEM classes were taught by also incredibly hardworking and caring teachers, but unfortunately, a lot of the curriculum, while content wise, it was valid and good, we just didn't really see a lot of representations of STEM professionals in their workplaces, of all the wonderful ways that STEM impacts our lives every single day. And so the Chief Science Officer Program really revolutionized my idea of STEM and STEM careers. I know that it was also impactful for other people on my campus as well. I come from a Title I school district, a public school as well. And so many students felt like even going to college was going to be a challenge, one that they couldn't overcome. But seeing someone from their demographics, from their own school district, even in most cases, their own grade, meeting and working with Governor Doug Ducey on his first student STEM advisory council, it really opened them to the opportunities that they could have as well. I really feel the Chief Science Officer Program has given us the opportunity, like so many other people that I've known, to follow our aspirations and dream as big as we can. Perfect. So we have, is there any other, um, I don't know if anybody's dying for that last question, but we have a few more in the chat. Um, how did we get interested in the CSO program is one that came out. And then one was about how much time did you dedicate to the CSO role? And then we have one about, um, you know, naming a CSO mentor. And so maybe CSOs could address, you know, one of those questions, a few each. Sure, I'd be happy to share um, how I got interested. So what happened was when I was in fifth grade, my sister, she was an eighth grader. So there was this thing at our school, uh, her school, the middle school called Science Olympiad. And she would sometimes go there. Like she's, she's more into business, but she would go there just for fun. And sometimes I would just follow her around because that's how I was. So I just kind of followed her there one day and then we were, they were doing like the dissecting thingy to, you know, try some biology. And the, the teacher was actually the advisor for the CSO program. And her two CSOs at that time were going into high school. So she had some open spots and she saw that I was interested and passionate about STEM. So she asked me if I want to be in it. So that's how I got into it. Perfect, thank you. Um, and maybe anybody else want to answer about um, a mentor that they, um, a mentor um, that they can talk a little bit more or um, how much time they dedicate to being in the program? I can talk about how much time I dedicated it because it really depends. Some weeks I would just load in my classroom account and talk to my peers and just check in with them and other weeks will be completely crazy like I'll be going on interviews I will be having events at my school that will take me three four days to plan out to run from one place to another so it would really depend on the amount of things I was really doing but it was always so awesome like that's the only thing that was stable and always maintained the same and I really want to answer that how I got interested in the program because it was back then in 2018 and the program wasn't in Mexico. And they told me like, hey, there's going to be free food. So that was, that's what got me. <laughs> yeah, 
Yeah, Thanks. for me, like CSO Andrea, there was a presentation in my science class um, and they kind of gave us out flyers. And on the flyer, I noticed that there was a possibility to go to Washington, D.C. So like Andrea, I also had a motivator and I ended up getting to go to Washington, D.C. my eighth grade year. And that was that really opened my eyes up to all of the possibilities that this program offers. I was able to meet uh, professionals from the National Science Foundation, from NASA, from the Defense Intelligence Agency. And it was really incredible to see all of the possibilities that I could have as, you know, as a student leader, and then to take that back and apply it in my own community. The Chief Science Officers Program has had such an incredible impact on my life. All right, any, uh, anybody else want to respond to this? Looks like Valentina, you're looking to. Yeah, sure. Something. Yeah, I just wanted to add on to uh, that. So, regarding who has served as my, as my uh, mentor, our director of student success, uh, Kelly, has really helped me step out of my comfort zone and grow as a leader throughout the program. And I would also say, uh, fellow CSOs, uh, all these amazing CSOs like Andrea and Haley, uh, they've also helped me grow as a leader and encouraged me. Uh, me. I remember my first year, I really looked up to the uh, Arizona Leadership Council and was astounded about. Uh, how much of an impact they had and how passionate they were. And uh, yeah, so that's what inspired me to follow in their footsteps. And then, I don't know, if, yeah, Austin, if you want to say something. I did the presentation on adult leadership, so I think it's appropriate for me to answer the mentor question. So for science in general, my passion is physics. So my physics teacher last year uh, was a big inspiration to me and a mentor, and I, and I still go to his room daily and talk to him about physics questions and everything like that. But then within the CSO program, I'd have to say Mrs. Kelly and Hope because I really started getting involved in the program this summer with the Zoom in on science calls that we were doing. You know, it was, it was a way to stay connected during the summer when really had nothing much else to do. So that they, they really helped me um, get more interested in doing more with the program. I agree with what uh, Austin said. Um, definitely this summer and probably starting maybe April or May, that's also when I kind of got involved in before that I just kind of maybe check classroom once like you know once a month or something but after that I was like hey I have nothing else to do so I was like okay why not do something so I got involved and it's been really fun the whole ride so yeah I think it's great perfect so um I think we're getting close to that point where um we go to the breakouts I did also want to acknowledge we have um, State Farm is here, so Kelsey West from State Farm. And when we're talking about mentors, when we had the even the first season, they sent out like about eight mentors to be with us that first year, and have consistently provided mentors and financial support that have been so crucial to to building the program in Arizona and potentially as we we expand to other regions. It's great to have hubs in other places like Texas, um, Georgia. And um, should I forget where, where they is? Where's the other one? Texas, Georgia, and help me out, Kelsey. Where's the other one? It's Dallas. Dallas, there it is. So thank you, thank you for that support and, and joining us today. And so with that, I want to pull it back to to Hope. Um, I want to say before we go into breakouts, thank you so much, CSOs, for being here today. Um, you know this, but I want to say it again. You're absolutely amazing. You ins uh, inspire me every single day that I hear you speak and the action plans that you do and the uh, impact that you're making on your communities and, and yourselves. And so thank you so much for being here. We really do appreciate each and every one of you. So, yes, welcome back, everyone. Sounds like there were some lively conversations um, in the breakout rooms, which we love to hear. Douglas is giving two thumbs up. We've got Michelle saying there was some really great stuff happening there. Um, and I did notice Beth and Fritz got like the triple uh, threat in their room. They got three CSOs. It looked like people kind of scattered out of that room. They had things to do. So uh, Fritz and Beth were super lucky there. So Michelle, it sounded like um, you had some things you'd love to share out about uh, your room. And then we'll go to Douglas after that and then Beth. Yes, we had some great conversations. And Andrea, I was just speaking about how um, you had mentioned that it's not the same across every um, 
cabinet, every region, and how different it was from Mexico to Arizona and Arizona being, you know, having a lot more metro. Could you speak to that just a touch more? And then Lori, if you could finish your conversation that I accidentally jumped out of, <laughs> that'd be great. <laughs> Yeah, I was, well, the one, people who were in my room are going to have to listen it to it twice, <laughs> but I mentioned that when we were on the LTI, uh, it was so awesome, it was so wonderful, and we saw the mentors that were supporting the kids that were learning, how do I help you, and I will contact this, contact that, and then we jumped in a van, drove 300 miles, crossed the border, and that seems to be stuck there for some reason, like it didn't cross the border. And when we got to our school, hey teacher, I really wanna work on this and I wanna do a STEM fair and I wanna bring engineers from this company. It was just a weekend, come on, calm down. That's the answer some of us got. And we were 14 kids and I was telling Michelle that only maybe eight of them had good mentors that were supporting them and giving them the connections and we're like, okay, really, you want to do that? Okay, let's bring it to our school. And some of us were like, so what do we do now? <laughs> and then I called Kelly, and Kelly was like, you can do this. And I was like, okay, I can do this. And yeah, that, and now I'm here. <laughs> Thank you, Andrea. And then, Michelle, you wanted somebody to follow up on that. Is that correct? Um, well, I had. I was going to see if Lori wanted to to put her comments in, but she was talking about the network of different mentors, having that available to CSOs is critically important to help um, support them in what they do to and build on what um, um, Andrea was saying. So yeah. I'll let you, yeah. And Kelly just put in the chat too, um, which is so true as CSO Lauren just said, right? So CSOs have what are called advisors that's within their school or within their organization that's outside of school time. And those people are crucial um, to helping them succeed. But mentors, as Kelly said, are magical, right? They're the ones who can take it to the next level for them. Um, and as Kelly just said in the chat too, right? It's about adults who listen and encourage students. So that's every one of us on this call. We can all be mentors in various capacities. It doesn't need to even be formal, it can be informal. Like saying to CSO alumni, Andrea, you can do this, you got this, make it happen, how can I help you? Or just to be a listening ear. So I think that's really um, an important part is that we can all do different things um, to help our CSOs, whether it's the advisors who are helping them really navigate what's happening in their school or their out of school time program, and then to mentors who are helping them more in the STEM fields and talking about soft skills or other things that they need in order to grow and develop as an individual. So um, thank you, CSO Andrea, for sharing that with us. I really want to add that I think that a lot of adults have to get in the mindset, like people that are teachers, parents, or people in power positions, that we are not just students sitting on a desk and like trying to see and hear and learn that we really want to interact, that really, really want the extra information, the extra experience. And I think that's something that sometimes is missing. So that's something to think about. Yeah, thank that's you for that. And um, as Kelly mentioned, if anybody wants to be a mentor, we would love to have you. So you can reach out to myself, Jeremy, Kelly, or Jake. Um, and we'll make sure that that information, our email addresses are dropped in the chat and they'll show up later um, as well when we send this out to everyone. So we'd love to have additional mentors. So thank you. And then Douglas, what did you, what was the discussion in your classroom or in your breakout room? Ha, huh, classroom. Oh, you're muted. It's, you know, we do, listen, I couldn't get the there video. There I on. am, there <laughs> I am. See, Charity, we're all having this moment. We, we okay. had a, we had a cat classroom where we were all learning how to click on that, that mic. So I got to tell you, we had a terrific group of, of adults with one CSO. Uh, I, I have to tell you that Lauren is having all kinds of competing interests from STEM sports to nuclear physics with Austin, perhaps, at Palo Verde. 
and I even heard air quality management. So just saying, uh, I think that it's awesome that we have such motivated, inspirational CSOs. So kudos to Kelly Green, uh, Hope, and the SciTech team with Dr. J for having a tremendous impact with these terrific future leaders. Rock on. <laughs> awesome. Thanks, Douglas. I love the enthusiasm. That's fantastic. They are pretty, pretty amazing. <laughs> they are. And then uh, Beth, what anything that you want to share out from your room? Well, as you said, we got the trifecta. We had all of the CSOs. <laughs> and so, you know, some of the things that we were talking about was that, um, you know, really looking at that, how do we get additional kids into, I say kids, youth, Sorry. into leadership opportunities? And so one of the things that, that really did strike a chord with me, because, you know, I've, I have been in, sorry, Rich, my husband and I are both having conference calls right here together. <laughs> um, <clears throat> anyway, is the, the fact that with student leadership, the difference with the CSO program is that it is student-led and the students get to make the decisions with help from their mentors about what they choose to do. It's not given to them to do, they get to choose what to do. And now I'm gonna quit talking. <laughs> <laughs> no, I love that, Beth. It's about student voice and student choice, right? So this is really about amplifying their voice and amplifying what it is that they're passionate about um, and allowing for that um, passion to come through in their, not only for themselves, but in their communities around them through their action plans. So that was, that was a great point. So, well, with that, thank you again, CSOs and CSO alumni for being here. We're so appreciative to each and every one of you. Um, we all will be meeting in two weeks on Thursday, March 18th from noon to one. Um, where we're going to be talking about water sustainability in the desert. So we hope that you can join us for that one. Uh, we'll have some really great presenters once again. So thank you all for being here. We appreciate our moderators and all of our presenters. Have a great rest of your day and thank you so much. Bye. Bye everyone. Thank you. Thank you. Bye, gracias. Gracias, Andrea. <laughs> Nos <Bye>. vemos. <laughs> Thanks, everyone. Bye. Appreciate you.